less than two days after the Pac-12 championship game was set in stone, supposedly, the Pac-12 has made a change, replacing one of the teams in its own championship with less than a week to go. But in doing so, the Pac-12 has essentially screwed one of its own teams out of an opportunity that they very rightfully deserve. Let's discuss. Any of you who are not familiar with how the Pac-12 was doing this season post-COVID-19 because they were so different than how most of the uh, universities in the nation are approaching football, uh, let me just give you a quick synopsis. So essentially, the Pac-12 put out a somewhat sort of normal conference schedule. It was basically you play, you were supposed to play all six teams in your division once, and then you play one team from the other division. So instead of playing three teams from the other division, you only play one this time. And then, of course, the championship game was going to work as normal. The two winners of each division would go to the to the title game, and then every other team would essentially get matched up with each other across divisions. So first place would play in the championship game, but then the second place in both divisions would play, the third place in both divisions would play all in the same weekend. And so the Pac-12 essentially made it so that the two second place teams in the division would swap in if one of the first place teams, one of the teams that was in the championship game, had to pull out due to COVID. And that's exactly what happened. Washington won the Pac-12 North, but they were forced to pull out of the championship game due to COVID-19 issues. So Oregon slots in to play the winner of the South, USC. But I'm sure you're wondering, who is the team that got screwed out of an opportunity that they probably deserve, like I said in the intro? Well, that team is the University of Colorado, a team who, be uh, against all odds, has made them ha, got ranked and has made themselves out to be one of the best teams in the Pac-12, despite the fact that they were coming into the season with a guy who hadn't played quarterback in college. They had a totally mismatched team. They had lost most of their best players. They've somehow pulled it together, but because of circumstances that are completely out of their control, they will not get to play in the Pac-12 championship game. Let me tell you why. So CU's issues began in the third game of the season when they were slated to play Arizona State. Arizona State had to pull out of that game due to COVID-19 issues. CU was already 2-0 at that time, and Arizona State wasn't playing very well, by the way. Uh, and, and it would have been only their second game of the season, Arizona State. Next up, CU was supposed to play USC. At that time, USC was the other team who was looking really good in the Pac-12 South, and so it seemed like that game would go a long way to determining the eventual winner and whoever would go on to represent the Pac-12 South in the championship game. USC had to pull out of that game due to COVID-19. Then, CU had a third... Uh, C because of that, CU on the fly had to schedule San Diego State with, I believe, two days of notice that they were going to play the Aztecs instead of USC. So they did that, and CU won that game. Then they went on to beat Arizona, and this past week, the final week of the Pac-12 regular season, they played Utah, and they lost. They got upset by Utah. Meanwhile, USC has actually gone undefeated now. Uh, in the Pac-12 South, they've gone undefeated this season, but again, they didn't play CU, the second place team in the Pac-12 South. So you're wondering, you know, how much of a how much of an effect did that have? USC finished off their season by beating their arch rival UCLA in a crazy game that that ended with USC scoring a touchdown with uh, less than 30 seconds left to win the ball game. Now, full disclosure, I am a big UCLA fan. And so it broke my heart watching USC win that game. But I'm not arguing that CU should be in the title game over USC. That's not what I'm saying. My argument is CU should be in the Pac-12 title game over Oregon. And here's why. Let's talk about the nature of divisions in sports. The reason why you have divisions is basically due to the fact that in almost every sport it is impossible to play every other team in your league at least once throughout the course of the season and certainly in college where you have hundreds of teams 
it's absolutely impossible. You can't do it. So in college, you break it down into conferences based on hopefully geography, although that's not always the case. Uh, school size, money in the athletic department. I mean, you you break them down. You're trying to put like with like, and then within those conferences, the big ones, the, mostly the Power Five, they break down even further into divisions, so that again, when you have the Pac-12 with 12 teams, it's impossible in a 12 game season for every Pac-12 team to play every other Pac-12 team, and then also have three non-conference games it's not possible so you break it down into divisions and normally the way the pac-12 works is every team plays every other team in their division so that's five games and then you play i believe uh if i if my math is correct you play four teams from the other division i think that's right um and then at the end the winner of each division will go on and play in the championship game and the reason you do that is so that you have a reasonable idea of who the best team is, who the two best teams are. And you're going to think that it would be the best team from each division, considering that they've played every team in every division has played an equal number of games against the same opponents. And so you, you figure you've got a good sense of who the best teams are. The reason why that doesn't work this year is because no team has been able to play every other team in their division uh, due to the number of cancellations that we've seen. It has not been possible for any team to do that. So normally where you would have divisions so that you could get teams playing common opponents and therefore you could gauge them against each other even if they don't play each other more than once, this year, you can't do that because teams haven't necessarily played common opponents. Teams have canceled against each other. Teams haven't played the same opponents as everyone else. Some teams like CU have played out of conference opponents, which a lot of teams haven't done. So it's impossible to actually measure these teams in reference to each other the same way that you would do in any other season. And yet, the Pac-12 is continuing with this division model because that's the rules that they have. And so what you end up with is 3-2 and two Oregon, who have lost their final two games against Oregon State and Cal, two teams that aren't very good this year. Oregon lost to both of those teams, and before that, they only beat UCLA, 3-3 three and three UCLA, by three points. So you're talking about a team that has not really shown that they are anything special this season. They get in over a 4-1 and one CU, who has played a non-conference opponent, because Oregon happens to be in the north and CU happens to be in the south and it just so happened that the north, the team from the north, Washington, happened to pull out of the game. And so that means Oregon gets back in. Now, Oregon was supposed to play Washington this past weekend. That was supposed to be the final game of the season for both teams, of the regular season anyway. Washington pulled out. So... What are we left with now? We're left with, again, 3-2 and two Oregon, not a convincing team, in over 4-1 and one CU, who has not who has had games canceled not, not by any fault of their own. It's the other teams that have had issues that it has forced CU to cancel games and then schedule the game on two days' notice. That team doesn't get in. 3-2 and two Oregon does get in. And this is my point. Why is it that we're not changing the rules in this of all seasons? Again, under normal circumstances, the division system makes a lot of sense. Again, you want common opponents. You want to be able to compare teams on a fair level playing field. Everyone plays each other. And so the top team from each division plays in the championship. It's how it works in almost every sport here in America. And it makes a lot of sense. But this year in particular, it does not. It doesn't make sense because the only reason to have divisions, mainly to play common opponents, has gone out the window because of all the games that, have been, that are being canceled. So the only thing that you're left to do, in my opinion, is to rank all 12 teams based on standings, based on who they've played, regardless of division. And when you do that, CU ends up in third. 
so they should be the one to come in and play when Washington has to pull out. Washington did have to pull out. So why is CU not the ones coming in to replace them? They've earned it. So it makes you wonder, what is even the point of any team playing? What, what was the point? Once CU had lost, once CU had lost to Utah, that game happened before USC. So once CU had lost to Utah, then what was the point of USC even playing? They could have just not shown up against UCLA and they still would have moved on. They still would have gone on to play. USC would have been five and one if that had happened. CU would have been four and one. So USC still would have made it because they would have been one game up in the win column. So USC didn't even have to play against UCLA. They could have not shown up. They would have been in the championship game. And the only way that CU would get in would be if USC had to pull out of the championship game due to COVID. And USC already missed games earlier this season because of a COVID outbreak in their own program. So what, what, what you don't, I, I hate the feeling in sports that there's nothing you can do. I hate that feeling because that's not what sports should be about. There's a reason that you play the game. And so to shut out a team from an opportunity just because we have these rules that don't make any sense this season, to me, is absurd. Because then what was... I don't always like, you know, looking back on it this way, but if we're going to do it, what was the point of CU playing this entire season? What was the point? Because it didn't matter what they were going to do. They could have gone undefeated and still not gotten in because of USC. Now, USC earned that spot by going 5-0. and Good for them. Congratulations. That pains me to say, but they earned that spot. So that's fine. But the underlying reality is that CU, there was, from the beginning, there was just not much they could do. And it's unfortunate that that's what happened. So my point is, in saying all this instead of just to rant on the state of the Pac-12. The point here in a broader sense is to get us as fans to re-examine rules that might not make much sense. I'm not a CU fan by any stretch of the imagination. My only skin in the game here is... USC because they're they're my team's rival, but I'm not arguing that USC shouldn't be in the championship game. Quite the opposite. They should be. They earned it. So I don't really have skin in the game here. What I'm saying is we as fans, we should be able to question rules that don't make any sense, both this year because of COVID and going forward. We should be able to question why the Pac-12 insists on sticking with this division system even though the only thing that it's good for has been rendered impossible this season due to COVID. Why would you stick with it? And what what point is there in having a championship game if it's not between the two best teams in your conference? What would be the point? And in in this scenario, if it was USC versus Washington, then it would have been the two best teams in the conference by record but unfortunately Washington had to pull out so now due to circumstances you have to you have to uh you have to go with one versus three that's your only option but that's better than one versus four so if number three is able to play and you say no because of this rule that was designed for seasons that don't have COVID because of that what we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna slot in number four I'm saying that we as fans should be allowed and should be encouraged to question why leagues or conferences make the decisions they do when they don't make any sense. There's nothing, it's not like these are biblical. I mean, this wasn't handed down on on the Temple Mount, right? These are rules that someone wrote and they can be changed with a pen and paper just as easily as they were written. And so we as fans should ask the question, should these rules be changed? And again, I say this in almost every video. We as fans have the ability to create that change or at least create the environment that would lead to change. 
The only reason that leagues or conferences would change what they do is because fans want them to. We are the ultimate arbiters. It's our money and our time that the leagues and the conferences rely on in order to make their money and pay their employees. So we have the power. And if we say what's going on in the Pac-12 is not fair, I'm not saying that, it, that it'll get changed you know, immediately. I'm not saying that if there's a social media campaign that suddenly CU will end up in the championship game because they won't. But this isn't the last time that something crazy is going to happen. Yes, COVID is going to go away. But if being a sports fan for over 20 years has taught me anything, it's that crazy stuff always happens. There's never, ever a shortage of something insane going on in the sports world. And so if we as fans can notice what's going on, notice that something is wrong and speak out, speak up so that somebody makes a change or at least takes notice of the problem here, of the underlying issues, that is what is important right now. Beyond the fact that CU, in my opinion, has earned an opportunity, has earned their their spot in the Pac-12 title game and they're not going to get it because of some old rules, well... What we can do is try to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And that's all we can do as fans. But look, I might be wrong. I might be reading this wrong. I say this every video. If I am, if you believe I am, please, please let me know. Drop a comment down. Let's have a discussion. I love doing that. I take a lot of pride in the conversations that happen in our comments section here. So please let me know if you think I've gotten something wrong Um, and, uh, you know, come back here to GA sports. We make videos questioning stuff like this, talking about stuff like this all the time. So come back if you're interested. We really, really appreciate it. Subscribe. We appreciate it.